Hello there guys, welcome to one of my live videos and on this video there is lots to negotiate about. So I just want to give you some latest news on Jade and Sancho, then I will delve into a few more topics a bit later on in the video on that. So, uh, Borussia Dortmund won against Paddy Bourne by 6 goals to 1 and Jaden Sancho had scored an hat-trick. I think that's uh, the first start he has made for Borussia Dortmund since the Bundesliga returned. Also to Jaden Sancho and I think someone else paid tribute to George Floyd in that. So obviously, you know, reflecting on this, you know, Jaden Sancho's price may rise again. And Brushy Dortmund, of course, do remain ruthless over their valuation because, you know, they have still said that they do want at least £100 million for Jaden Sancho. Don't forget, you know, Jaden Sancho has just recently recovered from a calf injury. Also, to the Brushy Dortmund, I think, assisting coach, he said that uh, Jaden Sancho has been affected by the speculation, you know, regarding a transfer to Manchester United and that. But um, I've been keeping you up to date of what's been going on with Jaden Sancho on a regular basis and reports were stemming from the German press yesterday from the German press yesterday and they said that Jaden Sancho wants to leave Borussia Dortmund and he is not willing to extend his contract with them and his preferred option is a transfer to Manchester United and that. You know, but it's not only been us that have been in for him, you know, there's been quite a few clubs that have been in for Jaden Sancho. Don't forget Chelsea have been in for him, uh, Liverpool have been in for him, Barcelona have been in for him, Real Madrid and that have been in for him. So he has been subjected to a hell of a lot of transfer speculation. Now, maybe Jaden Sancho won't leave Borussia Dortmund in, this, in the summer transfer window. You know, he may stay until next summer and that. But I think we said the other week that we want to pay around £60 or £70 million pounds for Sancho, but neither of them figures are going to be enough to convince Borussia Dortmund to offload him. You know, even, you know, with this coronavirus crisis, you know, Dortmund still want at least £100 million. Pounds, and I think Sancho has been affected, you know, with this coronavirus crisis. He has been, you know, Jaden Sancho has been affected by it. You know... Don't forget, recently, Jaden Sancho um, had an haircut and he also got tattoos of the Simpsons and Sonic the Hedgehog on both of his arms, you know, did the player. Uh, Jaden Sancho has still got a contract with Borussia Dortmund until 2022. You know, Jaden Sancho, this has been his third season with Borussia Dortmund. <coughs> it's been his third season with Borussia Dortmund. And I think since his arrival in Germany, he has been a revelation in that, as you know, Jaden Sancho. Dortmund only paid around £8 million for him from Man City. They only paid £8 million for him, so Dortmund are looking to make a huge profit on the player. Analysing Jaden Sancho's performances in, you know, the few years he's been with Dortmund, his valuation has persistently grown, you know. And like I said, Borussia Dortmund is the third club in his playing career because before Jaden Sancho was at Borussia Dortmund, he was at Man City. He enjoyed a few years with Man City, but the main explanation why I left Manchester City is because he didn't get any first-team opportunities. And also, too, before he was at Man City, he was at Watford. You know, Jaden Sancho began his footballing career at Watford and he was at Watford for several years. Now, I think we're trying to find a way to fund this £100 million move for Sancho. He did mention yesterday in the Daily Express that we are set to discuss uh, swap deals and loans with Borussia Dortmund and that. And don't forget, earlier on this week, he did actually know say, and these, this story was stemmed from Mundo Deportivo, and they said that Man United had offered Alexis Sanchez to Borussia Dortmund as part of a swap deal for Jaden Sancho. But I'm very, very sceptical, you know, that this swap deal will materialise, of course, reflecting on Alexis Sanchez's substantial wages, because Sanchez is on, what, 400 grand a week at Man United, potentially rising up to 500 grand a week based on the image rights and the bonuses and that. So I don't see that swap deal materialising. Uh, by the way, positivity has come out regarding Sanchez recently from our perspective, because obviously, you know, the Inter Milan sporting director recently confirmed that Sanchez will stay at Inter Milan uh, until the end of the season. And maybe if he's impressive, Inter Milan could consider getting him permanently in that. He seldom played for Inter Milan as Sanchez, 
because obviously, you know, he's being injured. You know, Sanchez did enjoy a difficult 18 months at Manchester United and that. You know, he did enjoy a difficult 18 months at the club. You know, I think Sanchez has still got a contract with us until 2022, I think. You know, Solskjaer did say, by the way, in January that Sanchez will come back to prove everybody wrong and that. But I don't want him back at Manchester United, despite the fact that Sanchez is on loan at Inter Milan. We're still paying the vast majority of his wages. I still believe, you know, we're paying like 300 grand a week and Inter Milan are paying like £100,000 a week and that. But like I said, you know, Jadon Sancho is our number one priority target. Obviously, you know, we first expressed our interest Interesting Sancho in 2017, and this was under the Jose Mourinho era. And that you know, this was under the Jose Mourinho era. Don't forget David Einstein, who is a very credible journalist. He came out quite a few weeks ago now, and he did actually know say that there's a very high chance that Sancho will join Man United in the summer transfer window. And yeah, we still remain the favourites to sign Jaden Sancho, and Jaden Sancho is only the age of 20 and he is predominantly a right winner. But don't forget, we've been working on his contracts for quite some time. We've also been in negotiations with his agent as well for quite some time. You know, like Fabrizio Romano did reveal a while back. <laughs> and like I've said to you before, Borussia Dortmund are known as a selling football club because in recent years, they have let quite a few of their players go to the Premier League. Don't forget, you know, they let... Christian Pulisic go, they let Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang go, they let Ilkwan Gundogan go, they let Mkhitaryan go, they let Kragawa go at one point. You know, they also let Raul Jimenez go, was it back in 2014, if I can remember rightly? Oh, not Raul Jimenez, sorry, that was uh, my Atletico Madrid, that was my mistake. There's players as well, you know, that they let go who didn't go to the Premier League, don't forget, you know, they let... Usain Dembele go and they also let Matt Hummels go but there again Dortmund have recruited quite a few players in in recent years don't forget they got Erling Haaland don't forget they got Erling, um, Forgan Hazard Julian Braun Emre Chan so they have recruited quite a few players in of Borussia Dortmund but the players you know that they've let go in recent years they have generated a lot of money for their departures and that and if they do sell Sancho they'll get a substantial amount for him don't forget, you know, we are it says we are we are willing to offer Jaden Sancho the number seven. Because obviously, you know, we have got number seven vacant at the moment. And I think, you know, Jaden Sancho would go very, very well in the number seven. You know, and I think he would go very, very well alongside the likes of Greenwood, Rashford and Anthony Martial in our attacking line. You know, he really, really would, would Jaden Sancho. He'd go very, very well alongside them. And, you know, it would be beneficial for him, you know, to come back to the Premier League. Uh, but I think Borussia Dortmund are basically waiting until the summer transfer market stabilises. They wait until transfer fees get back to normal before they do consider selling Jaden Sancho. But we've already confirmed we are not willing to smash our transfer record for him. But um, there you go. So that is the latest news on him. But it was good to see, you know, Jaden Sancho get a hat trick against Paddy Born. Um, Dortmund have actually, you know, uh, that was their fourth game today. Um, obviously, you know, the first game they beat Schalke 4 0 since the Bundesliga return. The second game they beat Wolfsburg 2 0. Then they lost to Bayern Munich 1 0. And obviously, you know, they won today by six goals to one against Paddyborn, you know, and that. But yeah, it was Jaden Sancho's first start, you know, since the Bundesliga returned, you know. But I still think, you know, there's a chance that Manchester United could get Jaden Sancho. I think he's a big, big chance we could get him. So let's just hope we can. So, yeah, and, you know, the Brushy Dot Managing Director, you know, he also said quite a few weeks ago now that he expects uh, players' transfer valuations, transfer valuations to drop anyway uh, due to the coronavirus pandemic. So, you know, we'll see what happens. But Brushy Dortmund did say they will not step in Jaden Sancho's way if he does want to leave. And I've already outlined the reasons, you know, why I take Jaden Sancho at Manchester United because he's well proven in the Premier League. He dramatically improves, us, and plus he's got a very, very good friendship with Marcus Rashford. So there you go. Now, I want to give you a bit of news on Paul Popper. Um, according to recent reports, uh, Manchester United missed out on the chance to re-sign Paul Popper back in 2013. Uh, this was around six years ago now, or just over six years ago. Uh, obviously, you know, in 2013, we had obviously, you know, David Moyes. So, David Moyes, you know, 
rejected the chance to re-sign Paul Pogba because, you know, we have got Paul Pogba now, obviously, you know, because we bought him from Juventus back in 2016. You know, we paid £8 to £9 million pounds for him. So he's our most expensive signing at the moment. But don't forget we had Paul Pogba when he was a lot younger under, under the Alex Ferguson era. In reality, you can say we made a mistake by letting him go on the free. But the main explanation why we let him go on the three is because, you know, his appearances were limited. So we had the chance to re-sign him um, under the David Moyes era. Uh, but the main explanation why David Moyes didn't, you know, get Paul Popper, Paul Popper back into the club at that point is because he was looking to get Cesc Fabregas for around £25 million. Because back under the David Moyes area, you know, we wanted to get Cesc Fabregas on the board. Obviously, you know, Cesc Fabregas now is currently playing at Monaco. Obviously, you know, before he was at Monaco, he was at Chelsea. Obviously, you know, before he was at Chelsea, he was at Barcelona. And before that, he was at Arsenal, you know, was um, Cesc Fabregas. I think he began his youth career with Barcelona and that, you know. So, obviously, you know, with, with uh, Cesc Fabregas, you know, with Man United wanting to get Cesc Fabregas back in 2013, you know, this is why, you know, we didn't re-sign Paul Pogba and that. Now... Obviously, you know, like I mentioned, David Moyes endured, was it, nine months at the football club. He's endured the shortest tenure with the club since, you know, the Alex Ferguson era. You know, like I said, you know, Alex Ferguson did make the mistake by recommending David Moyes in, but the main explanations why I recommended David Moyes in is because Ferguson had a lot of time for David Moyes at that point, and plus there was both Scottish, but we knew, you know, he didn't, we knew he wasn't going to suit the strappings of the club and that and he wasn't going to be able to get us in that commanding position where we did want to be. You know, we finished, I think, seventh under the David Moyes era. I think that's actually the lowest we finished in the Premier League era. Um, obviously, uh, you know, Moyes only recruited two players into the club whilst he was in charge and that was Marion Fellaini, who, of course, is no longer at the club. And obviously, you know, Juan Mata, who, of course, is still at the football club. But, you know, there's probably, you know, there's players over the years, you know, that in reality we should have signed, but we didn't sign them. So obviously, you know, that's a disappointment in that. And obviously, you know, like I updated you yesterday, you know, you had Javier Hernandez. He came out and, you know, criticised Manchester United for appointing stubborn David Moyes. And, you know, Javier Hernandez, of course, was speaking about his time at the football club. And, you know, he, he actually, you know, said that Moyes made a mistake by not letting him go in the 2014 January transfer window and that. But Javier Hernandez was just basically saying that Moyes is not on the same level as Pep Guardiola or Jordan Klopp because he's not a manager to the top level, is, you know, David Moyes and that. You know, so Javier Hernandez, you know, was saying this. Don't forget, Javier Hernandez is a former Manchester United player because Javier Hernandez, I think, did enjoy like five years at the football club. So um, there you go. But anyway, you know, Paul Popper, you know, since he rejoined the football club from Juventus back in 2016, you know, he has had a long running transfer saga in that. And, you know, we do need to make a decision on his future. Now, I updated you, didn't I, on my video yesterday. And these reports were stemming from Italy. And they did say that Man United are open to swapping Paul Popba for Adrian Rabiot in the summer transfer window. I don't think, you know, this swap deal will materialise. I really, really don't. And, you know, Adrian Rabiot is a cheap solution. You know, you probably get Adrian Rabiot for around 26 or £27 million. Pounds. There was talks about, you know, swap deal between Rabiot and Pogbino quite a few weeks ago on that because I do expect Adrian Rabiot to leave Juventus. This has been Adrian Rabiot's first season with Juventus. It's been his first season with them and he's enjoyed a very, very difficult first season. Um, Adrian Rabiot has got a contract with Juventus until 2023 because when he signed for Juventus, he signed a four-year deal. Juventus didn't pay anything for him because Juventus got him on a free transfer last summer. Um, it revealed the other week that Adrian Rabiot's had talks with Carlo Ancelotti, who is currently the Everton manager. Also, to Arsenal have been in negotiations over getting Rabiot, you know. And uh, like I said, I think we was also interested in Adrian Rabiot when he was at PSG and analysing it, you know, Adrian Rabiot's actually spent or did spend the entirety of his career with PSG. He was at PSG for several years and won a total of 18 major honours with PSG in that. 
you know, so yeah, it says we're open to swapping pole probably, but like I said, you know, swap deals are very, very rare in the modern game. You know, it did say, you know, Juventus uh, have offered, you, have tried to offer us quite a few of their players to try and get Paul Pogba. You know, obviously, you know, there was, there's been talks about Aaron Ramsey. There's been talks about Mumilan Panjanic. There's been talks about Federico Bernadeschi. I'll give you the news on Federico Bernadeschi yesterday. And these reports were stemming from Gazetta della Sport. And they said that... If, Federi if if he is to leave Juventus Federico Bernadeschi, you know, he does want to make a move to the Premier League. Gazzetta della Sport also mentioned that Man United, Chelsea and Arsenal have all been interested in the player. Uh, Federico Bernadeschi now is into his third season with Juventus. You know, I think he's got a contract with Juventus until 2022. Uh, Juventus did pay around £35 million for him from Florentina back in 2017. He is in his mid-20s. Um, his versatility is very, very good. He can play as an attacking mid, a winger, and he's also been deployed as a box-to-box -box midfielder in that. But he's also been mentioned of coming to Man United as part of a swap of Pogba going back to Juventus. But now there's just talks of him coming without any swap deal involved in that. Um, I heard that he actually you know, was interested in going to Chelsea. Like I said as well, uh, Matty Stilett was also spoken about a while back. You know, So swap deals have been high on the agenda. Uh, Juventus, by the way, did say that they want Paul Pogba's wages wage, wages to be lowered because Paul Pogba's wages at Manchester United are like £15 million pounds a year. He did actually you know, say the, not too long ago that Juventus want Paul Pogba to lower his uh, £11 million a year wage demands and that, you know. But, um, yeah... And not, I did say, you know, didn't I, if Paul Popper does leave Manchester United, I think he will make a return back to Juventus. I really, really do think he'll make a return back to Juventus, you know, because he did enjoy four good years with Juventus, but the vast majority of his performances at Man United since he rejoined have been totally comparison to his ones in Turin. Now, don't forget, you know, Real Madrid have been relentlessly linked with Paul Popper. Um, I give you the news about that the other day on that story. It says, you know, that Real Madrid had offered up to four of their players for Paul Pogba, and that was Martin Odegaard, Brahim Diaz, James James Rodriguez, or James Rodriguez, and Lucas Vazquez. So Real Madrid had offered offered us up to four of their players, you know. But he did actually, you know, say that Real Madrid, you know, will not pay Paul Pogba's 15 million a year wage demands because they fear it will call it will uh, cause a wage row with Sergio Ramos and Casemiro. Don't forget, Real Madrid were relentlessly linked with Paul Pogba last summer. Um, and actually, you know, Paul Pogba revealed last summer that his preference, you know, was a move to Real Madrid because Paul Pogba was talking a lot about Real Madrid last summer, about his dreams of playing under Zinedine Zidane. His dreams of playing under Zinedine Zidane and that. You know, but Paul Pogba did make the admission last summer saying that he wanted to leave Manchester United because he was seeking for a new challenge. And he even publicly admitted that he wanted to leave the football club. Now, you know, Paul Pogba's agent, Mini Raliola, um, recently was back in discussions with Juventus. Also, he's held talks with Real Madrid. I think also, too, Ed Woodward's had some negotiations with Mini Raliola. But we've been very, very critical of Mini Raliola, reflecting on, you know, some of the comments he has said since the turn of the year and that. You know, and you know, Real Madrid have got quite a few players on their agenda because they are looking to do more business, you know, when the summer transfer market opens. You know, they're also looking to get rid of players as well. You know, Real Madrid did recruit around six players in last summer. You know, they've got the likes of Eden Hazard in, Luka Jovicic, Ferland Mendy, Rodrigo, Eden Militeo on that. You know, so they've got, you know, quite a few players on their agenda, you know. But last summer, we said we wanted 180 million for Paul Popper. Don't forget in recent weeks, you know, you've had PSG and Juventus that have been in for him. Oh, PSG, sorry, and uh, in Milan, not Juventus. Also, two Barcelona have been in for him in the past. So he has been subjected to so much transfer speculation. You know, Paul pogba has got a year left on his Man United contract, but the club do have an option to extend it for a further year. Uh, don't forget, you know, when the football season does resume, Paul Pogba's is going to be back because he's now fully fit, like Solskjaer confirmed. You know, because Paul Pogba, you know, has, you know, recovered from an ankle injury. He's only played eight times this season for the football club. His appearances have been limited due to his injuries and that. You know, the good news is now Rashford's back as well. 
because, you know, he was out with a back injury. So when the season resumes, we have got a fully fit squad on that, you know. But I think the best we saw of Paul probably was in that three-month period when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was the interim manager. You know, that's when that's the best, you know, we saw of Paul Pogba. Um, like I said, he enjoyed a very, very difficult time under the Jose Mourinho wearing that. So there you go. But, um, yeah, so we need to make a decision on his future. Uh, like I said, there's been a few players on our agenda who could replace him, you know, if he does leave the football club, Paul Popper. So there you go. Um, also, I want to give you some news um, on uh, a bit of news on Arsenal because uh, reports, I think, have come out today and said that um, Arsenal demanded Anthony Martial um as part of a swap deal of Sanchez, you know, coming to Manchester United. So they wanted Anthony Martial did Arsenal instead of Mkhitaryan because obviously, you know, in January 2018, obviously, you know, Sanchez came to Man United and Mkhitaryan, you know, went to Arsenal. So it was a swap deal. I actually, you know, I can't remember if a fee was involved. But Wenger, Arsene Wenger revealed that, you know, he wanted uh, to get Anthony Martial instead. Uh, Arsenal, you know, have been in for a few times, Anthony Martial, but I don't think, you know, we've got any intentions yet of selling Anthony Martial, to be quite honest with you. We haven't got any intentions of selling Anthony Martial. Um, I don't know if he's going to be here for the foreseeable future. I don't think he'll leave this summer, in the summer transfer window, but I think maybe he could leave next summer, Anthony Martial. Uh, like I said, you know, Martial is now into his fifth season at Manchester United, you know... Like I said, you know, before the football season got suspended, he was in a good vein of form. You know, I think one of the best seasons Anthony Martial enjoyed was his debut season under the Louis van Gaal era. You know, we did get Martial as a 19-year-old and he's now 24. Uh, don't forget, we have been playing in, playing Martial in that number nine role this season. And, you know, he seems to be you know, very, very effective in that central position. He predominantly plays out wide, but I think, you know, we'll keep Martial in that central position. So um, there you go in that. And, um, you know, Mkhitaryan, I didn't really watch him, you know, when he went to Arsenal. Um, I know he's not Arsenal at the moment. I think he's on loan with Roma. Uh, Mark Roma, you know, looking to get him permanently in that. So um, there you go. So that is the latest news on all of that anyway. Um, you know the news on Odi Nagalo as well. Uh, there's a lot of positivity coming out regarding Odi Nagalo. I think Odi Nagalo... Odi Nagalo has um, agreed um, a new loan deal with Manchester United, uh, which will keep him at the club until January 2021. So Odi Nagalo is set to stay at Manchester United for a further seven months. So this is obviously you know, very, very good news. And it did actually you know, say that we had to come to an agreement today with Shanghai Shenu. Obviously, you know, if we didn't come to an agreement, you know, he's, he would have been set to leave the football club because, like I said, his current ex current uh, loan expires today. Does Odi Nagalo's and that. Um, Odi Nagalo's agent has been talking and, you know, he actually, you know, said that Man United, you know, are close to, uh, are close to extending his loan deal and that. He also said earlier on this week that Agalo was close to agreeing a contract extension and that. But, you know, we have been locked in negotiations with Shang Aishinu. We have been locked in negotiations with them. Now, obviously, you know, Shang Aishinu had softened their stance, it said, uh, not too long ago. And it did say they will allow Odi Nagalo. They will allow Odi Nagalo to extend his loan at Man United until January providing that he does sign a two-year contract worth £400,000 a week. And obviously, you know, they want to include the obligation to buy at the end of the loan and that. Uh, Shanghai Shinu, you know, have said that, you know, they do want around £20 million to get rid of Odina Gallo permanently. You know, whether we get Odina Gallo permanently or not, I do not know. Obviously, you know, like I said, we've got Odina Gallo in on deadline day. And obviously, you know, we paid around, was it £4 million to get him on loan? And like I said, you know, he's enjoyed a good start to his Man United career. And, you know, he has been a very, very good cover-up to Marcus Rashford as Odi Nagalo and that. But, yeah, looking likely, you know, he's going to be staying at the football club, you know. But Agalo did say that he will risk a £75 million contract, you know, with Shanghai Shinu, so he can stay at Manchester United. Obviously, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as well wants to keep him at the football club. So, you know, you do know the news on him.
But um, like I said, it's going to be interesting to see how Ole Gunnar Solskjaer approaches the summer transfer window. Uh, like I said, he's got a lot of players on his agenda. Um, he has got the backing of Ed Woodward because Ed Woodward has said quite a few times this season that he's willing to back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and he's also assured that his job is safe as well, even though we have enjoyed our worst season, you know, for like 30 years uh, in the Premier League. But yeah, you know, Ed Woodward is willing to back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and that, you know, Solskjaer has already revealed his transfer plans. You know, he wants to make around, what, three or four signings in the summer because he believes we need around three or four signings to become title contenders next season. I think Solskjaer, you know, still wants to continue the policy of recruiting young British talents to Manchester United like he did do last summer and that. And he's already identified the areas in the squad where he does want to strengthen up. Um, like I updated you, um, we'd recently taken a £140 million loan from our 150 million revolving credit facility. The main explanations for this is is to uh, is to um help us through the coronavirus crisis and also to fund moves in the summer transfer window and that. So, you know, we have taken a £140 million loan, but there again, it may help us get the players that we do want in in the summer transfer window. Now, obviously, you know, our debt has had risen up by almost £130 million. Um, Our net debt now is like £429 million, is it something like that? Or £429.1 million. Like I said, you know, the coronavirus pandemic has cost us £28 million so far. But we did say that we do expect the final figure to be higher. And Ned Woodward did reveal this on his statement, you know, after he had um, that conference call when he was speaking to Man United investors the other week and that. Um, and yeah, so there's a lot of uncertainty for the, sum for the summer transfer window. Uh, don't forget, Ed Woodward did reveal, was it a month or so ago now, that we won't do business as usual in the summer transfer market. Um, so basically, he ruled out big transfers to Man United. And he did say, you know, we won't be spending hundreds of millions of pounds. It said the other week that we may find it difficult to give Ole Gunnar Solskjaer an official transfer budget in that. Because obviously, you know, Solskjaer's transfer limit had been set and it did say we was not willing to spend any more than 60 or £70 million pounds on any player. So there you go. Like I said, I've been very, very critical of Solskjaer this season. You know, for the vast majority of this season, I've been critical of him. A lot of Manchester United fans have been very, very critical of him. But not only him, I've been critical of some of the players, you know, because he's still dead, dead wood at the football club. Also, too, I've been critical of Ed Woodward. A lot of United fans have been critical of Ed Woodward, you know, reflecting on how poor our recruitment policy has been and, you know, of us overpaying for players and that. And this is why Ed Woodward is being criticised. Woodward's been in the club since 2012. Don't forget, you know, we've criticised the Glazers a lot. The Glazers are accountable as well. You know, the Glazers have been here since 2005. You know, this is now, I think it's been like 15 years now, uh, the Glazers have been at the football club. And I think it did mention that we'd paid approximately £1.5 billion uh, for the privilege of being owned for the Gla by the Glazers for around 15 years and that. So um, there you go. Like I said, you know, Solskjaer's got big decisions to make in the summer transfer window, you know, what players he's going to recommend in and what players he is going to get rid of, of course. You know, I have an idea, you know, the players we're going to get rid of. But with us getting rid of players in the summer transfer window, we are going to generate money that way. So let's just put that into the equation and that. You know, but I have an idea, you know, the players, you know, that Man United are going to get rid of. Like I've already mentioned, you know, Solskjaer has got rid of a lot of the deadwood since he got recommended into the football club. Like I said, a total of 19 players have left, you know, since, you know, Solskjaer came in and that. So um, there you go. And obviously, you know, the season, the Premier League season is resuming on the 17th of June. And obviously, you know, the Premier League is finishing on the 25th of June, uh, 25th of July, uh, sorry. Uh, there's nine games to play in the Premier League. There's 92 games to play in all competitions. Like I've said, Tino, there's games. Uh, there's a uh, game to look forward to when the season resumes. Also, too, we've got priorities. You know, the FA Cup's a priority for us. The Europa League's a priority for us because that's a chance of us getting some silverware on the board under Solskjaer. 
You know, we haven't won out yet in terms of Suwa and the Solskjaer. So if we could win the FA Cup in the Europa League or even at least one of them, it would be a memorable first full season for Solskjaer and that. We're into the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. We've got Norwich in the quarterfinal. We're into the last day of the Europa League. You know, the Premier League's been suspended now for a good 10 weeks or something like that. You know, but the decisions we've got to make before the season resumes and decisions we've got to make ahead of next season... You know, like I said, we've got a uh, we've got a dilemma at left back. You know, next season who's going to be our first choice left back? Is Luke Shaw going to remain our first choice left back? Left back, or is Brandon Williams going to become our first choice left back? I think we've already made the goalkeeping decision. Uh, David De Gea is going to remain our number one goalkeeper, and he's been our number one goalkeeper for several years. We said um, in regards to Dean Henderson, we'll allow him to remain on loan at Sheffield United for the rest of the season. That will probably loan him back out next season, more than likely. Um, you know, we've got to make a decision on, you know, Diego Delors' future. We've got to make a decision on Angel Gomez's future in that. Uh, as well, you know, Solskjaer needs to work out his best eleven because, you know, he's been making a, you know, a lot of rotation in the squad this season and that. Um, probably needs to work out his best formation as well. So there you go, there you go, and that, and um, yeah, and obviously you now my recent video, which is still uploading, I give you the news on Sal Nagiyas. Uh, reportedly, you know, this was stemming from some reports earlier on today saying that Sal Nagiyas has tweeted a post saying that you know he will announce his next club in the next three days. Uh, don't forget, reports were stemming from the Spanish press the other week saying that Son the gears to Man United is practically done and confirmation will be expected at the end of the season. You know, don't forget Son the gears has got a release clause of around 130 odd million in his Atletico Madrid contract. So um yeah. But it'll be interesting to see who we sign in the summer transfer window. It really, really will in that. So anyway guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very very soon.